Good morning, everybody. I'm Muriel Bowser. I'm the mayor of Washington, D.C. Uh, and we are located in the Marion S. Berry Building and the Metropolitan Police Department's headquarters. Uh, before I uh, begin, I want to wish everyone a happy holiday season, especially those celebrating uh, Hanukkah. Uh, and today we are uh, here to talk about this space and about the future use of this space and more importantly, the work that will happen here. I'm joined, of course, by the leader of the Metropolitan Police Department, Chief Pamela Smith, uh, the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety and Justice for the District of Columbia, Lindsay Apia, uh, and I'm joined by uh, leaders of regional law enforcement uh, who the chief will acknowledge. Uh, and so what we are talking about today is the real-time crime center um, that will be located at MPD headquarters and it will be up and running in the early part of next year in the space that is behind me. It's a new dedicated space that will be staffed 24 seven with personnel who will monitor and respond to criminal activities in real time. Uh, we talked in July when I tapped Chief Smith to lead MPD uh, that we would be focused on every tool um, that we had available and those that we didn't uh, to make sure that we are doing everything in our power to drive down crime and fill gaps not only in the law, uh, but fill uh, any voids in our toolbox. And so this uh, is, of course, uh, a great opportunity for MPD to enhance the way uh, we work with police departments around the region. Uh, you heard me say earlier this week that I am confident that we will turn crime trends down. And the reason that I'm confident is because I know that we're focused. Uh, we're focused on everything that we can do on the executive side of the house, working with the council, and working with our federal region and regional partners. And you're going to see that focus and collaboration right here at the Real Time Crime Center. So I want to acknowledge uh, that we will be joined in this space and some representatives are here this morning uh, by the Amtrak Police, Arlington County Police, United States Capitol Police, Fairfax County Police, Metro Transit Police, Montgomery County Police, uh, Prince George's County Police, United States Secret Service Uniform Division, um, and I'm sure I've forgotten someone, so the chief will uh, correct me. These agencies will work in collaboration with MPD to monitor and analyze uh, data from various sources, including CCTV cameras, emergency calls, and other technology. The Real-Time Crime Center will be supported as well by D.C. Homeland Security, uh, an emergency management agency, and the D.C. Housing Authority. Additionally, we will continue to work with our federal partners at ATF, FBI, and the United States Marshal Service, who we work with on a daily basis. And the goal of this is to respond faster and more efficiently um, when crime happens in our community. Uh, and I know earlier this week uh, in a meeting with the D.C. Council, the United States Attorney spoke about the importance of sending the message of swift and certain consequences, and we couldn't agree more. And this center is going to support uh, MPD's uh, part in that process. And before I uh, hand it over to Chief Smith, I wanted to provide a quick update on the emergence on the public emergency I issued last month around juvenile crime and as part of that public emergency the Department of Youth and Rehabilitation Services has completed the renovation of an additional housing unit at the Youth Services Center adding 10 additional beds more than that DYRS continues to work with the private sector um, to uh, procure private shelter home beds um, with private shelter home providers. In fact, DYRS has uh, contracted for an additional 10-bed 
facility, uh, and it's in the final stages of contracting for an additional uh, six-bed contract. DYRS has also hired more staff, frontline staff, and leadership to support the continuum of care for court-involved young people and their families. So I want to acknowledge and thank the PSJ team and the team at DYRS for getting this done so quickly. Uh, and so with that, I want to turn to Chief Smith to talk about the Real Time Crime Center. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you all for being here today. I'm Chief Pamela Smith of the Metropolitan Police Department here in Washington, D.C. I am joined by numerous partners representing agencies from across the region and our federal partners we work with every day here in the district. I want to thank them for joining us on today and thank them for their commitment to today's announcement. Today's announcement is the start of a new initiative that will enhance our crime-fighting strategies by using technology to assist with how we respond to crime in the District of Columbia and in the region. Over the past few months, I've been working with my team to really look into how we, how our department works, our resources, and how to respond to crime, and always looking at it through the lens of how do we enhance the safety and security of our communities. Under the leadership of Mayor Muriel Bowser and Deputy Mayor Lindsay Apia, we developed a plan to enhance our crime-fighting capabilities by enhancing our focus on strategically responding to crime in real time. Beginning in September, I stood up our existing Joint Operations Command Center between 8 p.m. and 4 a.m. between Thursdays and Sundays. This helped guide tactical responses to emerging crime patterns and aided in helping officers to quickly respond to crime trends on the street. But I also realized that that was not the end of what we need to look at when it comes to crime fighting strategies. Recently, as recently as last Friday, I announced Operation Atlas, Action Teams Leaving Areas Safer, which enhances our presence throughout the community and tackles emerging violent crime trends. This operation is a mobile force operation where we increase our visibility and presence across the district to address crimes each day. Operations such as Operation Atlas, which have already shown results, are better supported when deployed alongside a real-time crime center. Today marks a significant milestone in this journey. As MPD re relocates our physical headquarters to 441 Fourth Street Northwest, the Real Time Crime Center, or RTCC, is not just a physical space, it is a concept, a commitment to leveraging technology and collaboration to keep our communities safe. Housed within this dedicated center will be skilled investigative personnel, both sworn and professional staff, that will be constantly monitoring and responding to criminal activities in real time. The RTCC will serve as the nerve center of law enforcement in the District of Columbia and the surrounding region. It will monitor and analyze data from various sources, including CCTV cameras, emergency calls, and other technology products. Our ultimate goal is to enhance situational awareness, facilitate quick decision making, and improve the overall efficiency of our crime pre prevention and response efforts. In essence, the real-time crime center will allow us to begin the investigation the moment we receive a call for assistance and allow us to provide timely information to our officers who are working on the ground. We know that crime in our region is not limited to jurisdictional boundaries, and sometimes those committing crimes use that to their advantage. The RTCC will serve as a hub for our local and regional law enforcement partners helping to share information in real time across jurisdictional boundaries and leveraging expertise with our respective teams. The law enforcement partners that you see here today, I met with a few weeks ago to discuss this concept of the Real Time Crime Center. Everyone you see standing here today immediately, immediately accepted the opportunity to join us in this space. The law enforcement partners you see here today, the mayor has already acknowledged, but I'll acknowledge them again. Our Amtrak Police Department, Arlington County Police, U.S. Capitol Police, Fairfax County Police, Metro Transit Police, Montgomery County Police, U.S. Capitol Police, Prince George's County Police, U.S. Secret Service Uniform Division have all committed to have representation or representatives in the center. We are also joined today by our federal partners at the FBI, ATF, as well as our Marshal Service, who 
we work with every day operationally throughout the District of Columbia and who will also be supporting our real-time crime center. Additionally, D.C. partners such as the Homeland Security and Emergency Management Agency and D.C. Housing Authority Police Department will also be supporting us in this effort. Today, we are announcing the partnership with many regional agencies and their participation in the upcoming launch of our Real-Time Crime Center. This represents a step forward for the Metropolitan Police Department and in communities throughout the Washington, D.C. region. We are committed to ensuring the safety and well-being of our communities, and the Real-Time Crime Center is a testament to that continued commitment. Thank you, and I will turn it back over to Mayor Bowser. Okay. Chief, I think I'm going to turn it to you to answer all the questions. Uh, so we'll be ready for some press questions, and Chief Smith will take them. Mark. Uh, Chief, I guess first kind of a bucket question about technology. Mm -hmm. One, can you tell us how many cameras the center will have access to uh, in total? Will you be using facial recognition, license plate readers, artificial intelligence, shot spotter? So we, we currently use ShotSpotter as part of our technology today. Uh, we will not be using AI and or facial recognition. As you know, Mark, we have a total of about 300 or so cameras that are spread out across the District of Columbia. Um, we utilize those cameras whenever we have First Amendment activities. Um, our Joint Operation Command Center, the, the, the personnel or the partnership that you see behind us, when we stand up or we have to uh, provide support, if you will, for First Amendment activities, these partners join us in our joint, currently in our Joint Operation Command Center, and we will utilize that same concept. As of today, I, I cannot tell you how many cameras we will have in this space. Uh, we're still in the, uh, in the procurement and bidding process with that. And what can you tell us about, well, this slide is gone now, but there was a slide up that had, it seemed like, a lot of corporate insignias. Uh, those, those insignias are pretty much the um, technology that we're using right now, like Mark 43. Um, I think you may see, um, it's called, it used to be called Spot Shotter, but now it's called Sound Thinking. Um, and I think that's just a con conglomeration of the current technology that we're using right now. Either you or the mayor could respond. The ACLU has put out a statement raising their concerns and their words, calling it an alarming expansion of government surveillance with no oversight. Can you address that, and particularly the concern about oversight of the data that would be collected here? Well, I can't address that today, but it certainly is something that we will work with with our legal team to ensure that that, that information that we do gather as far as data is accessible to the public, as we do with most data. Are there yes, sir? areas of the city that you need cameras in that are unrepresented in the city right now? Well, I don't, I'm sure there are areas in the city that are unrepresented, but we are working very diligently uh, with the procurement of the cameras that we, we currently have. Um, and I think we have, uh, I don't want to give the number, right? Um, but we do have cameras that we are procuring that we will distribute across the District of Columbia. And I think uh, the mayor agreed and we thank her for this. Um, I think she's announced that we will double the current cameras that we have on the, within the District of Columbia. Yes, sir. here like will somebody from Fairfax be here 24 hours a day or just occasionally uh, how will it work in practice and also also what does this give you by including others that you can't do now listen uh, what it gives me um, is certainly the opportunity to really uh, the collaboration right and then the opportunity for us to really um, um, have a space and place where we are uh, collaborating in real time I'll use for an example on many occasions um, and I'll use Prince George's County for example there are are armed carjacking um, suspects that are going between both jurisdictions. And oftentimes we're either on the radio or we're on a, on a phone just trying to track those individuals. Being able to have the real-time crime center, when that call comes in, having a, a person or, or whether it's a sworn officer or a professional staff member sitting in that space or a criminal analyst, um, we can track that vehicle in real time. And it's a quicker response time um, than what we currently have right now. Okay, so what will this look like? Will somebody from Prince George's Absolutely. Well, we're, we're in negotiation about how often. I think what we have to do in the beginning is look at where our current crime trends and patterns are specifically related to violent crime, um, and we will determine what that will look like. So a question about a recruitment. Yes, ma'am. If you're able to respond in real time with the consent, or do you have the staff to respond to that once crime has been identified? Absolutely. We're, we're responding to crime now. Uh, we are certainly in the process of um, recruiting. For the, metro for the Metropolitan Police Department, I think I've stated before that over the last 
three months, we've seen an increase in our recruits that's been our in our recruit classes, and we will continue that effort. I will add that um, we are not taking personnel off of the street. Um, and I, I know there was a question yesterday, and when I say the street, from patrol in our communities in order to um, reconfigurate, if you will, our staffing in the real-time crime center. Just a couple of questions. Yes, um, you talked about how our borders are porous. One, do you have any numbers in regards to how many of D.C. suspects travel to Fairfax, Prince George's, Montgomery counties, uh, how often you had collaborated before? The second question is about... Uh, a Let me answer your first question. I will do my best to have our team provide that information for you. I don't have it right now in front of me. Was there any collaboration before this joint Absolutely. Operation? With every single partner that you see in this space, we all collaborate, um, especially when we have our... Um, our nightlife task force, um, in addition to when we stood up the robbery, robbery suppression crime initiative, um, our traffic safety compliance um, checkpoints, um, our task force, all of these partners that you see behind me have been embedded with the Metropolitan Police Department prior to my arrival. Um, and I give credit to, to this team who continuously work tirelessly every single day to support us in fighting crime here in the District of Columbia. And this is just an effort to enhance what we're doing when it when it comes to crime fighting this is not new to the United States of America there are there are real-time crime centers um, dispersed across the United States and I think we need to be in the game uh, when it comes to crime fighting and, and the mayor committed to and I and I committed to this as chief of police to use everything that we have available in order to do that one other question one other question to follow up uh, in regards to an incident that just happened with a murder suspect uh, linked to a, 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 a homicide on U Street in October, mm -hmm. student from Fairfax County. Mm -hmm. It appears there was some miscommunication or perhaps your investigators went a week before the search warrant was executed, informed Fairfax County school officials and the resource officer that he was under investigation. They therefore went to his home. Attorneys are alleging that gave him a whole week to get rid of evidence in regards to this murder. Uh, could you speak to that uh, that process, and do you believe a real time center like this will 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 clear up any miscommunication or one agency moving faster than the other? Well, I, I, and good question. I do not have a response to what you shared. I think this that's still under investigation. I think in, in all fairness to the investigation, we'll let that play out. And if there are some things that we need to do uh, better on our end, obviously we will do that. Um, clearly having the real time, having personnel from other agencies in that space will certainly help us uh, if there are all those disparities that you just spoke about to kind of leverage that and tighten that up a lot better. I will not talk about staff members and, and tactics with regards to the Real Time Crime Center. And did you study any other department? I did. Uh, which department? I physically went to New York. I went to New Jersey. Uh, we are going to Atlanta. I have um, some substantive conversations about traveling to Detroit and some other um, Real Time Crime Centers across the District of uh, across the U.S. before we finalize um, our um, uh, crime center behind me. Yes, ma'am in terms of dealing with constraints on pursuits in various jurisdictions. And in Montgomery County, they are piloting the use of a drone. I know here airspace is an issue. Does this take the place of what a drone might be able to achieve in terms of tracking? It does not take the place. And I, and I think I'll echo what the mayor just said uh, momentarily, that we will use all technology, new initiatives in order. I, I didn't say that. I said we will utilize any technology that we can look at in order to, to fight crime in the District of Columbia. Is there any concern that pouring resources into addressing, uh, monitoring and responding to crime takes away from resources that could go to uh, benefiting people from low socioeconomic statuses and educational backgrounds? Well, before I answer that question, can I, can I answer her, her first question that she asked with regards to the relationships about uh, pursuits in other jurisdictions? Uh, we work very closely with all of the partners here, and, and especially those of them that, that are in Maryland and as well as in Virginia. And we have policy that dictates how we will conduct our pursuits. Uh, many occasions, when I was with U.S. Park Police, many occasions, uh, Prince George's County, uh, the, the suspect would leave the District of Columbia, go to Prince George's County, Prince George's County picks it up. The person comes back, D.C. is ready to pick it up. So we will still have that level of collaboration. The difference is it'll be a lot quicker. Now, I'm sorry, sir, I, 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 can you repeat your question? Yes. Uh, is 
there any concern that pouring resources into monitoring and responding to crime would take away from resources that could go to addressing people with so low socioeconomic status and uh, educational backgrounds? Thank you for, for the question. The question is, um, should we put more into human services and not enhance police services and policing services? Um, and the, the answer is we do a lot of investment in, in human services uh, to that will help our lower income residents, including having the most robust investments in public education in the history of the District of Columbia more into affordable housing, more into job training, and we'll continue to do that. I do want to emphasize who's most impacted by rising crime, and that's people of lower uh, incomes in neighborhoods that have been impacted by crime for decades in large part. So the things that we do to make the city safer will by and large have the most beneficial impact on people who are living in, in, in lower income neighborhoods. Uh, we'll take a few more. Anyone who hasn't asked, yes. Yeah, can you speak, so just to understand, if the crime center observes what appears to be a crime on one of these hundreds of cameras, would that remove the need for a victim or a witness to report the crime before sending the police response to that location? No, not at all. I mean, we, we typically receive, that when crime is occurring, oftentimes we, we receive that information from the public and that the expectation is that the public will continue to report crimes as they always have. Okay, but you need that response before sending a police response that location no. if observed? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I have a question, just one more. Just, you already responded to the ACLU's concerns. What is the message to the community members here in D.C. concerned about crime and, and those who have um, ill intent. What's well, your message? This is, this is my message, Delia. Um, and when the, the question came up earlier, I, I can't remember exactly um, what it was, but I've been around long enough to know when we discuss CCTV cameras and deploying CCTV cameras, and people expressed a lot of concern about crime cameras at the time. Uh, the, the discussion is fully different. Uh, when we go to community meetings now, people say, how can I get a CCTV camera in my community? The council members, literally, if you go and ask any of the ward council members, do they want more CCTV cameras in their ward? They're going to say yes. When are they coming? And how can I sign up for, for one? Uh, we are also in an environment where we have to have more technology uh, to to balance off not having the number of people resources that we have had in past years. So no camera will pre replace a live police officer, uh, but it does enhance um, the, the uh, force's ability to be in more places, uh, if you will. I do want to reiterate the point that the chief made about no changes. If you see a crime or you need police, you dial 911. This is not some place uh, where every second of, on every block and every place, a police officer is going to see what is, or is going to be better than people on the street. Um, so always call uh, 911 uh, when you need police assistance. We'll take a few more. Yes, ma'am. This is a, a comprehensive um, response to crime once it happens. What about prevention efforts? Does this pull away from your ability to prevent uh, crime? Not at all. Um, and uh, most of our prevention efforts are focused in other agencies. Um, the, the police, of course, prevent crime by making sure that the people who are committing it are held accountable uh, in working with the, the prosecutors uh, in the courts. Because what we know is a large part of our crime uh, is committed by a small number of people. Um, so we know if there's certain justice for them, it is likely uh, to drive down crime. Um, but that's not to say that we're not working um, on the prevention side with violence interrupters or giving information uh, to help um, drive down neighborhood beefs 
on the attorney general may have another set of answers about what he's doing with youthful offenders who aren't going through the court system, which we'll likely have more to say about uh, in, in the beginning part of the year. Um, but there is a lot of parts in, of our government that are focused on keeping people um, from committing crime. Yes. Retailers who say they're paying for private security because they are not confident that they can get police response. What's your response to them, and do you think that this will help alleviate that cost to them? Um, I think that businesses engage in private security for for a lot of for a lot of reasons, and they've been doing it before this year. Um, but we do think, especially, and the chief told me that you know there was some reporting yesterday about what we're discussing now. And she got proactive outreach from the business community that says, sign me up. Uh, we want to uh, engage with this effort, uh, and we want as many uh, eyes on the street as possible. And I, I, I should have mentioned earlier when I talked about some differences in now and I guess 15 years ago when we were talking about CCTV, but we literally have fewer feet on the ground and eyes on the street. Uh, and just from just a change in commute patterns and the like. So it's really important um, that we, uh, we, replace, we replace that. Yes. Uh, one quick follow to what you just said about sign me up. Does that mean businesses or individual residents could sign up in a way to share in real time their home <clears throat> security cameras? I think the expectation is that we'll be working with our business community first um, and, and go from there. People should know, and I know we're talking about CCTV cameras now, but they're literally, in any establishment that you go in, they're cameras. And the, what we're talking about is how to best coordinate uh, those cameras for, for public safety. And I think a good part of that um, begins now. And I, I just want to be clear about the, the, you, Delia asked me about the message. And the message is really to people who would commit crime if they haven't gotten it already. You're going to be on camera and you're going to get caught. Uh, and this provides a, another piece of evidence um, that can help some that will give confidence to our prosecutors who may be concerned that they can't get a conviction. So we want to give them some confidence. Uh, it'll give more information uh, to our juries and judges about what happened at any incident. Uh, and we've been learning this lesson. I think Metro Transit has been at the forefront of making sure that its properties are covered. Um, and so I almost know for sh sure if there's a crime on a Metro bus or on a platform or on a train that there's going to be good video. Uh, and we want, we want other places, um, I want to be as confident about that in other places. Yes? Two quick off topic. Uh, okay. Could you comment on the Washington Post strike that's ongoing today, and particularly the, the fact that, the, the, that they want to reduce the number of reporters covering the Metro beat by 10%. Any comment on that reduction in reporters covering local news plus the strike today? Well, we always want great reporters um, covering not only the district, but everything that uh, affects our lives. Uh, and I will say what I say in, in the case where, where there is a, a strike or work stoppage. I hate to hear it when there's a strike or work stoppage. That means fewer people are working, fewer people are coming to the district. Uh, and there's some dispute at one of our employers. So what I say um, to, to the employers and the employees is I hope that they can get to the, the table around a resolution. Um, I can't say anything about the kind of the business decisions at the Post. Um, I recognize that they're having some financial issues. And my other question is about the immunization enforcement and, and the parents who are finding themselves racing and scrambling to get these immunizations. Get it. Get your shots. Your kids need their shots. Um, I, I received one of those letters about my daughter at the beginning of the process, um, and I was sure that she had gotten all of her shots, but our paperwork didn't match up. So I got my paperwork. I marched it into the office, um, and she's at school right now. Uh, and it's important that everybody who's in our public schools has the confidence um, that their children are safe. So we're asking all parents to do um, as is required and make sure that they're up to date on their vaccinations. And they may be in the case that I was in, that the paperwork just didn't match up. So get that paperwork and get it matched up. 
Uh, we've had the occasion where parents have told us that they have an appointment scheduled and so that they can work with their, um, with their principals on what to do next. Is there an annual cost estimate here in running this facility? <coughs> a cost estimate on running the facility annually and how much it costs to get it up and running? So we're still in the process of, of I, I think someone asked about the cameras and still there's some things that we have to do to develop this. Today is just the announcement of the commitment from our partnering agencies here in the region and also here in the District of Columbia. And that's really what the announcement piece is today. What I will say is that the renovation of the sixth floor was in motion, I think, several years ago. I mean, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm reaping the benefits of it and I can do something different in the space with the mayor and the deputy mayor's support with this real-time crime center. Yes. Um, after the crime center becomes operational, I'm curious, um, in February, will Operation Atlas continue? Will they work together? Abs Listen, every initiative that I've launched will continue. One of the things that I will say is that we recognize um, there are some things that we can do better, and I'm with. I'm actually working with my team um, diligently, and they're actually working right now. That's why you don't see most of them here um, on our homicide reduction crime plan, as well as our violent crime uh, plan for 2024.